Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're going to be doing a bit more on this tank today and adding some new fish. We've got 50 new fish to add to this tank today, so as you can imagine, they're not going to be discus. Um, but I'll take you through that process and you might notice that I've added a few extra plants in there as well. Um, we talked about that in one of the last videos, so a bit of a general update, adding the new fish and maybe talking about some of the comments we've had about the tank as well. So I've just done a water change on this tank. Um, all the fish are out and about and what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed them. I, I fed them already. I'm going to give them a bit of a treat, which is some of this frozen brain shrimp. They love this stuff. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to get their bellies full so they're not inclined to attack the new fish. So what we're adding is 50 cardinal tetras, but they're not fully grown cardinal tetras. So they've got some size to put on. But I think they're big enough that they won't immediately be seen as a snack. So the plan is get them fed up and we'll get them in here. So we'll do a little bit of a feed for these guys now. So usually when I approach the tank, as you might see, all these guys start to get interested and they come up. Um, all I'm going to do is take this, plop this in. In fact, what I'll actually do is I'll turn off my pump so it doesn't all just go straight down into the sump. Um, this is where I've got this little controller which has a feeding button and if I just press this it pauses that for 10 minutes it pumps down there and then you hear this gurgling noise coming from up here there we go so while well, that's happening I'll just drop this in I like to hold on to it a little bit and these guys, they just go crazy for it. I think it's definitely their favourite food, um, freeze-dried brine shrimp. I tend not to use the blister packs. I've tried them in the past, but they tend to be just mostly water. But my local breeder friend, who I got all these fish off, like Corbin Discus, put me onto a different supplier. Um, yeah, these are a lot more value for money. So I'll just leave these in here, these guys will feast on this for the next 5-10 minutes. And all the other fish, they like them too. And hopefully that will get their bellies full and they won't be inclined to just chomp on all the fish that, I've, that I'm about to add in. Um, discus, they are cichlids, they are aggressive now and again. Everyone thinks they're just these dainty, delicate fish that just float about in the ether. But nope, they're cichlids. They like a rock as much as the next fish. Um, but yeah, so, as you can see, the, all the new plants that I didn't quite have, I've added everything that I'm going to add. Now the purists out there among you are being, oh my god, you've got African plants, you've got South American plants, you're mixing up all the wrong species. I don't care. Um, this isn't a biotope, this is if you like, an art installation in my living room. I'm trying to find something that looks nice. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, what do you guys think? Does it look good? Does it look bad? I know it's not right if you're a purist, but I quite like it. Obviously, I've just clouded up all the water by adding all that brain shrimp, but the plants so far are all doing pretty well. Normally, I have a few melting away or dying back, but everything looks pretty good. And if you look at these ones here, you can see the new growth. I mean, these have only been about a week, maybe, just over a week. Already got quite a bit of extra growth on them. So I know it's a big mix of plants. I know it's not quite right for the traditionalists. But the mix of plants, rocks and woods, I'm fairly happy with. So we'll let these guys enjoy finishing off their snack. Uh, and then I'm going to turn the lights off. So that's my second tip. So, Alexa, turn off the display light. And the reason to do that is just because if it's dark in there, it gives the tetras a bit of a fighting chance to get in there without getting gobbled straight away. Um, so, a little bit of fairness, giving the tetras every chance that I can. I've fed them up, got their bellies nice and fat, and got the lights out. We'll go downstairs and we'll get the extra fish to bring them up. So, before we go downstairs, I um, hope you'll indulge a little bit of a rant, if you will. Um, I'll give an example of a comment, but this is the type of comment that pops up every now and again. Um, it just really grinds my gears a little bit, and 
I am a hobbyist, I'm an amateur, I'm not a professional, I've not been doing this for a hundred years. Um, I, th I think I'm fairly competent as an aquarist. I like to think that I know what I'm doing in most cases, but always willing to accept advice, always willing to learn new things, and I think that's the open-minded way most people should approach this hobby. So if you have any questions for me or any queries that about the way I do things, I'm more than happy for you to chuck some comments down and ask the questions, and I'll, I'll try and answer them all. Uh, pretty much try and answer every comment that I get because I'm only a small channel so that's a good thing but every now and again you get this kind of cretinous ill-informed opinion dressed as fact logic vacuum of a comment and um, such as this one now I'll I'll take out the name because I don't want to single any one person out but this is the type of comment that gets at me so I'll read this particular one but again I'm not picking on this one person this is all the same sort of thing Unless you 100% know something to be true, don't present it as fact unless you're willing to be challenged and told that you're wrong. So this one is, I've raised discus and planted aquariums, they grew, bred and then right about the size you had died. Never again with these delicate fish. People think months or a year is a success when it's really not. It's why you don't see very large breeder discus on YouTube unless it's one of the big breeders of them who of course can easily afford with the stock and supply they have to put them into show tanks. If they die months later? Question mark. The rightfully kept fish in the breeder room are always there. Breeders keep pairs alone and stock in bear tanks in areas of low traffic. No kids to pound on the glass and make them jump, right? LOL. Just wait for the white feces. Ugh, sooner or later in planted tanks with substrate. Tank mates are just disease carriers to discus, it's all they are. Bollocks. So this is clearly a person who has not had luck keeping discus and has just assumed it's not me, obviously not me that's doing things wrong, it's discus, the discus are the problem. It's the way people try and tell me I can keep discus. Absolute nonsense. So this guy's had discus before which have grew and bred and then about the size that I have. I've had all kinds of sizes of discus, so what is he referring to there? Died. Never again with these delicate fish. They're not that delicate. It's a fallacy. Maybe we'll do a video on discus myths one day. And um, People think months or year is success when it's really not. Who are these people? Who's telling this to this guy? I haven't ever heard anyone say that if you keep a discus alive for a few months it's a success. Sorry, but bollocks again. Um, it's why you don't see very large breeder discus on YouTube unless it's one of the big breeders of them who can easily afford to stock and supply and put them in show tanks. Again, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people with big massive discus. And the reason that breeders and importers and specialists keep them in big tanks is because, uh, keep them in bear tanks rather, is because bear tanks are easier to keep clean and they're easier to grow discus in. If that is your goal, easy maintenance, and fast, rapid, speedy growth, yes, bare bottom tanks are the way to go. If your goal is to have something nice to look at, planted tanks might be the way to go, or something in between. There's something for everyone there. It's just not true that you can only keep them in bare bottom tanks. Tank mates. Tank mates? Um, they're just disease carriers. Again, not true. If you buy low quality stock, then of course you can bring in disease. Um, but that's just as true as it is from other discus as it is for other types of fish that you might want to keep your discus. The discus live in the bloody Amazon River with other fish in there as well. So again, it's just absolute nonsense. Um, so this whole thing about you can only keep them in bear tanks, you can only keep them alive for months, as if you're an expert in this sort of thing, it really pisses me off. And it's just something that's just plain not true. So, again, apologies to that particular commenter, but that's that type of comment where you present your opinion and your own failings as if it's fact and everyone else should listen to you. Nonsense. By all means, stick up your own videos and your own evidence and proof of all these things and we can have a, a reasoned discussion about it, but I suspect that if I was to reply to that comment, that's not what would happen. It would be an argument. And I'm, to be quite frank, I'm fed up explaining to people why I'm right and you're wrong. Okay, down in the fish room now. In fact, let's say hello to the puffer fish. If this is your first time here, you might not know this guy. This is what I might be forced to call Puffy the puffer fish. The most originally named fish in the universe. 
Uh, thanks to all you guys backing me up on a poll that I put on my community tab asking for names. My daughter suggested Puffy and I couldn't deny her so I was hoping you lot would do that but nope that was the most popular vote. So Puffy it is. Um, he's a Mabu Puffer. Got him a couple of weeks ago now. Um, he's just down here really quarantine bit of size on and then we'll move him into his next size up tank which is probably be my office tank. Um, so let's give him a feed at the moment. He's on chopped mussels. He's been really good feeder actually. Um, fairly different to the Fahaka puff I had. He would be straight onto anything that came into the tank and just destroying it. He's a little more reserved. He will just kind of eye it up for a while and then go down and eat it. And he seems to struggle with snails. Um, the Fahaka puffer would be in there, bam! taking it to bits, he likes to kind of pick at it a little bit and um, let's put a little bit more in and obviously because we're doing this on camera he's not going to have any of it oh there we go, I think we've got his interest now see he just likes to look at the food for a while before he actually eats it but he has been a good eater mostly on chopped mussels at the moment, um, feeding them frozen or slightly thawed should I say some blood worms, some snails, there were some cherry shrimp in here that just either escaped from other tanks or left over from other uses. He's had them as well, so he's got a bit of a varied diet. When he gets a little bit bigger, obviously we'll be onto the bigger snails and maybe things like cockles and mussels and uh, clams with shells on to keep those teeth trimmed or the beak trimmed. But for now he seems to be doing okay. I like this kind of epic mono brow that he's got going on. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. So in there, believe it or not, are 50 Cardinal Tetras. I have had them in here, it's got to be three weeks now, something like that. They have put on some size, they were very small when they came, so I've been quite heavily feeding this tank and changing the water quite heavily but yeah they're getting up there now so these guys are the ones that are coming upstairs so I'm not going to do anything particularly special about it just going to fill up a little bucket like this with some of the tank water that we've got here same water parameters that I've got upstairs same temperature um, everything should match and then I can take this upstairs and get these guys in the only thing I'm going to do is take out the java moss that I've got in there at the moment just to make it a little bit easier to catch. The reason that I had them in here as well as just to put size on is to check them out for illness, disease, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people do advocate and will say get them in, medicate them straight away, but I don't really like to medicate them unless I know there's something wrong with them. Um, so that's the only thing that I've done slightly differently. Then some will organise or some will say. And now I've just stirred up the bottom so I'm going to actually leave it five minutes so I don't take a load of goop upstairs. So I'm just going to take everything out including the filter that's in there. Uh, it's just a sponge filter. I've also got some bristle nose plecos in here. In fact, the wall, every single side of this apart from the front was caked in algae and I've put in three of those first batch of bristle nose plecos in here. And they've pretty much wiped it out already. So they're really good at clean up crew. Um, I've not lost a single fish from the tetras from the 50 that have come, so, and I did count them at the time. So that's really good, um, especially when you're buying lots of small fish, you do kind of expect some rate of attrition, but yeah, really good. Every single one still here in the county for it. But the tank bread is another thing I try to do if possible. You can get tank bread varieties rather than wild caught. That's what I like to do. Is it even cherry shrimp in this tank? How have they got in this tank? It seems impossible.
So my bio security in the first room is obviously terrible because I've got I randomly find guppies in just about every tank and now I find cherry shrimp in just about every tank. I don't know if someone's coming in in the middle of the night and just moving fish around. A bucket of tetras. Nothing really special about this part. I've got my bucket of little fish. Add to my tank of big fish. I'm just going to um, literally sink this bucket a little bit, give it a bit of a tilt and let them swim out. Um, all the fish are over here, so we'll go over this end. But as you can see, this is the corner that I feed the fish mostly, so this is the corner they come up to um, and they'll be interested in, so I'm hoping they'll mostly stay over here while all these guys empty out over here. He says uh, the blue one goes straight over and has a look and see what's going on. So they're coming out now. I might just feign a bit of interest over at this side to keep the fish over at that side. All the fish are in. They're already mingling with the existing tetras in there. And touch wood. None of the discus are going for them yet. So we'll leave them like this for a little while. I'm not going to turn the light back on for another, I don't know, give them half an hour at least or something along those lines. That seems to have done the trick for me in the past. And then we'll turn the lights back on and have a look. But right now, that's what a school of 50 cardinal tetras looks like. So the, the reason that I am taking precautions here is because I've fallen foul of this trap before. Um, a few years ago, I had a big tank of discus. I bought 50, is it rummy nose or cardinal tetras, I think, at the time. They arrived, got them acclimated, poured them in, and discus went mm -hmm. nom 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 and just destroyed every single one of them. So that was money well spent. So, so far, so good. Fingers crossed that it's all going to remain that way. Um, so this is as good a time as any to say if you haven't already please click that subscribe button it really helps me out share it amongst your fishy forums and groups and friends and things like that tell them to come and check out the videos and you won't miss any of the future uploads um, I've got this tank here I've got the ones in my office I've got the ones that you've seen downstairs in the fish room I'm just a regular hobbyist and keeping tracks of what's going on I do have a website where I sell some of the extra stuff that I've got like the mountains of Java moss or things like that, so by all means check that out, loads of links in the description. But we'll leave it there just now, I'll come back, we'll do a bit of a, a cinematic montage if I can, uh, once we get the lights back on, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!